I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. Third and final round, let's get to the action. Ken Climo, PDG number 4297. I have a one stroke lead going to the final 18 at the Throw Down the Mountain Four. So, one week from today, you'll be celebrating your 48th? 48th birthday. How's that feel? Yeah, you know, feel, I feel good. I feel good physically. It's just mentally 48, so that seems like a big number. Close to 50. <laughs> You're still under par. Good luck out there today. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Daniel, Clearwater, Florida, one stroke behind the champ. See if I can't lay it down. My name is Austin Turner. I am currently sitting tied for a second, going into the uh, third and final round out here, and hopefully I can do good, shoot some good shots, and just play safe. Does it make you nervous playing with legends such as Ken Climo or others? Not really. They're just, it's just another person out there playing. I just see him as another competitor. Talk about the support that you've had from Discraft or other sponsors. Discraft has, uh, they've, they've done a lot for me. They treated me just like family at the beginning of last year and it's just been great ever since. They, they love every teammate and they just treat us great. And uh, I like to also say, uh, say thank you to another round disc golf down in Charlotte. They've just, uh, Try to give me support for this year and it's going to be a great year. Best of luck to you. Thank you. I'm Justin Lammers and I'm tied for second with one round to go. You're currently just a few strokes off the lead where Ken Climo sits. What's that like playing with such a legend? It's a little nerve-wracking but uh, he's a real nice guy and it's a lot of fun. I'm Jamie Mosier. I'm two strokes back going into this final round. Jamie, like myself, you're from the Midwest. What in the world are you doing down here in Florida? Uh, enjoying the weather. I've kind of spent the last couple winters here. It's real nice down here. What are some of your goals or expectations when you're down here playing in Florida? Um, basically, get in the golf that I wouldn't be able to really enjoy back home and uh, get to play these tournaments. And we are here on hole number one where Justin Lammers has no problem. Close to 60 feet, slightly downhill and in the woods. He's going to open up with a very strong statement here with a birdie on hole number one. He's going to be happy with that. Danielle here, very excited as he's been working on his game. He's talking about traveling and touring a little bit more here in this 2016 season. And just short. Austin Turner's attempt from just about circle's edge is a little bit high, pushes him out. Jamie is in for his three. And Kenny, literally just three feet from the pin. Great way to open the round here. Kenny and Justin with the only birdies here on hole number one. Hole two has options of going out with a wide right-handed hyzer route or going up the middle so you can take it a little bit more directly. However, that is a smaller gap to hit. No problems for the first two throwers. And just the same with Danny. One thing that you'll notice here with Austin is his left-handed forehand shot is very efficient. Jamie Mosier even commented recently just how it looks. He makes it look stupid easy, I think, was something along the lines of how he phrased it. Austin with a fortunate bounce or skip there keeping him right up on the shelf, right where he needs to be, and Kenny just barely missing that tree. Thanks. He's gonna find himself just a few feet from the pin. Mosier with a standstill. You can hear the wind picking up a little bit. This was the windiest of the three rounds. Danny's shot hits and heads toward the OB line. However, he is safe. 
even though Justin had the furthest drive in the group, he wasn't necessarily rewarded with a good lie. And he is somewhat hacking away here, making it tough. But like the rest of the weekend, he still makes a solid putt. He's going to walk out with a par four. Danny's in for a par four as well. Jamie from inside the circle. Kenny's going to tap in for a very short and easy birdie. Off to a good start. Two for two. And Austin with a birdie here. Moving back to the long tees for this round. As we said, they moved to the short tees on Saturday primarily because of the threat of rain, and the rain didn't just threaten. It certainly arrived, and it was there for most of the morning. All of the leader card in the open division managed to stay away from any of the rainy conditions. However, some people that played early in the day were not loving life. But that is, in fact, why you saw them move to the short tees for that second round, and ultimately it was the right call. The round still lasted over four hours. Justin here throws a great shot right up the middle. And believe it or not, that's got too much power. Great line, just too much power. Here's another forehand. be a little bit short up there and footing is the name of the game here on this second shot as you're going to see here by Kenny you've got a few rocks to deal with you also have a upward sloping incline so Kenny trying to make the best with his lie it's really in a great position it's just now a matter of having good footing And I think he was foreshadowing and doing it somewhat sarcastically because he did just that. Hit the tree and then carried OB. Justin had hit the tree during Saturday's round and carried OB. Justin made the long 60-footer to save the par. That's Danny's third shot. And Kenny taking a full two meters. You'll see that come into effect a little bit later. The rule for the weekend was that if you were within two meters of a barbed wire fence, I'm sorry, yeah, anywhere within two meters of a barbed wire fence, you got to pull it upwards of two meters out. Normally when you're OB, you just have the one meter relief. However, with a barbed wire, they wanted to play it safe so no one would get injured. And short, we knew it. Justin unsure as to how in the world that came out. It looked like a really solid birdie putt. Danny letting one slip by there. Mosier carting the relatively easy birdie three as everyone else taps in. He's going to pick up two on Austin, or I'm sorry, pick up strokes on Austin and Justin and two on both Daniel and Kenny. A great looking shot there by Jamie Mosier. And that forehand had it just had a little bit more hyzer angle on it from the forehand release. I think it would have skipped up nicely. Kenny inadvertently walking into my shot there. That was Lammers going wide right. Climb yeah. with a similar shot that we saw in the opening round. 
And that noise in the background is an emu, I believe, is what Kenny said. Somebody had said something about, I had heard earlier in previous years there were donkeys or something across the street, but now I'm thinking if Kenny had said that was an emu or a llama, I believe he said emu. <laughs> Daniel's attempt, just off the front of the basket, shy. And again, Austin Turner's a little bit on that upper chain area. Justin's dialed in. Mosier's got an opportunity for another birdie. He birdied holes two and three, so this would be his third birdie in a row. Count it. Mirror off in here. Kenny with an easier putt than he had for birdie on Friday's opening round. Most of the guys tap out. Again, birdies for Kenny and Jamie. Justin with a good recovery. Jamie somewhat yanks that one to the right. Kenny had spoke the other day of just missing that single dark tree that is just right of where Austin is there. He says if you miss it just by a foot left or right, you should be looking at the basket, and Justin Lammers misses it perfectly. It's going to be a little bit deep. He'll have a good putt from there. And Daniel with a great-looking shot coming in. Much Jamie can do except for layup. Solid putt by Lammers. And Kenny checking his balance, also carting the birdie. It is the first time in the three rounds he's carted the birdie on this hole. And as of the recording on Wednesday night, no one has yet to guess the correct model of disc that Kenny is putting with. I teased you guys earlier saying it was not a KC AVR. There has been literally dozens upon dozens of guesses all incorrectly. So as of Wednesday night's recording, a few days later, people still aren't sure as to what he was putting with. I'm not going to tell you yet. Birdies for everyone except for Mosier. the new hole six. Interesting fact, as one of the easiest holes on the courses, Kenny is actually 0 for 2 on birdies here. We'll see if he can change that during this final round. Austin makes me think he's giving this a solid run, and he does, just skipping over the base of the Discraft Chain Star basket. That's Lammers throwing a Nova. Daniel, do it again. Good job. Daniel not thrilled with his effort. And of course, we'd like to thank Discraft and Sun King for the amazing support in putting this event on this weekend. Daniel has a layup from there. Mosier for Birdie. Just inside 30 feet. He's now birdied four of the last five holes, getting off to a great start here. And 
And Kenny gets the hole for the first time this weekend. He's glad to do so. Also off to a very hot start here. He did have the slight mishap of the OB, but seems to be dialed in. And he's going to need to be with all these young guns and very tight race. He only had a one-stroke lead going into this final round. And another birdie. So we're going to see, just like the previous hole, four birdies and a single par, except for this time, Daniels left out in the cold. Hole 7 with the new pin placement this year also makes for some gorgeous shots if I happen to follow them. And Ken Climo hits, skips, and is literally resting on the basket support there, on the base of the basket. Gorgeous forehand here by Austin Turner. couple of great supporters and helpers. I believe even one employee and one volunteer here of the event helping out as we're following this last lead card of the weekend. And I gotta admit, in the six or so years that I've filmed disc golf, I think those were some of my favorite shots I've actually captured myself. And Justin captures another birdie. No doubt for Austin Turner. Daniel moves himself to the good side of par, as in under par. Jamie will tap in for the lone par, and there is Kenny resting right there on the base of the basket. Hole 8 is a very challenging left to right with just a few different gaps, and Kenny almost peered it. Unfortunately, this hole, if you don't hit a gap, as long as you don't get into any major trouble, you're probably looking just to get up and down and cart a par 3. I believe in the previous 10 attempts I've seen on this hole in the first two days, I think I've seen 9 pars. And that includes playing from the slightly shorter tee that you can see. Daniel's not sure if that gets through. It looks like it does. And Jamie going with plenty of heat as that's moving from left to right. Kenny has a standstill approach. Justin is just a bit short. Austin's looking pretty aggressive here on this attempt. And just barely short. Daniel also yeah. aggressive. That's, that's exactly that's where, where he went out. That's, that's where he went out where the flag is laying down. If he gets a meter, that's safe from a, a fence up high. I'd imagine. You just right. take this piece of metal and put it on top of it. Lay it down with a rock. That work for you? Well, I think I should get two meters. It's barbed wire. Well, I think we should talk to the tournament director about two meters. We're right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can get mic real quick. Yeah, that's fine. I say that would be two meters there. <laughs> and as I mentioned, if few holes earlier. Any barbed wire. Okay. Barb wire. There you go. So he's going to get a full two meters here because there is some barbed wire there. Normally, you, as I said, you get the one meter from OB. However, there's barbed wire. And Jamie takes advantage. He gets the full six feet six inches in and he's able to save his par. Daniel's in. 
<laughs> He's just making sure he didn't cut himself. Yeah, I understand that. But I thought it was fancy. I thought it was fancy too. Conversation as to whether that was just any other fencing or the fact that that was happened to be some barbed wire kind of in an obscure place is the discussion there and everyone taps in and uh, unfortunately the streak continues out of four, 15 opportunities I've seen 14 pars there on hole number eight. Kenny with a nice turn and gets a kick off of the trees. If that had gotten sucked in, he would have been in a world of hurt that's, as that's on the hillside. And Justin's not turning over, hence it wasn't going to come back into frame for me. And Jamie definitely pulling that further right than you'd like to be. Nice shot. What a beauty. Sweetheart. Get up in there. Our friend Daniel Pastore of ABC Dis. Super great guy out of Illinois. Also helped me throughout the weekend, so I'd like to uh, thank him. As well as I'd like to thank Mike DeJory, Mark DeJory, correction was kind enough to help me out out of Orlando. I really appreciate the extra support for the weekend. And as I mentioned earlier, Mike Barnett, Discraft, Sun King Dis, and all of their staff and crew were all all part of what made this amazing event happen. Justin Lammers goes way up top and it rolls back. Daniel's going to try and fight through. However, he gets caught up on that left-hand side. Very difficult for anyone to make it through there. And Jamie's third shot. Another solid run there by Daniel. It seems like he's been all over the basket. And Jamie hits the one tree between him and the basket there. Kenny's going to make sure of his footing. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to fall the whole time. Kenny with some great balance. Mosier taps in. Justin has this single tree to contend with as well. He's going to take his time, make sure that he can get into position. He's going to go to one knee, make sure it's legal footwork. Pretty solid front nine for him as well. He could have done without the uh, extra stroke after that roll, but it's been a very exciting nine. We're excited to head back to the nine. These guys are heating up. It's a very tight battle. Kenny with a two-stroke lead, moving into the back nine. 